The Javelin-class destroyer is one of the largest combat ships in Star Citizen, and from what we know about the ship already, has the potential to be absolutely epic. But what might that actually look like, in terms of what to expect from the ship in-game? I'm Farrister, and in this unusual break from the ordinary format, I welcome you aboard the Javelin-class destroyer which is docked at the Speculation Station. Whilst there have been some hints of this stellar leviathan in-game through the Invictus Fleet Week tour and the Xenothreat events, this video will straddle between things that we think we know, but also a little bit of creative license. So this isn't a definitive promise for what we will get in-game, but hopefully an interesting expose nonetheless. The natural starting point for a destroyer is the weapons it uses to destroy. The tour of the UES Warhammer gave quite a lot of information about the armament of a military spec javelin. There are 15 turrets in total, of which 13 are manned with an embedded operator. The other two are the large ship-to-ship -ship turrets, located at the back, ventrally and dorsally, potentially on rails. During Xenothreat, those ship-to-ship -ship turrets were the ones with the big, red, signature firing animation, and look to be equipped with four weapons each. Those are probably size 9 laser cannons, although that bit is currently speculative. The remaining 13 turrets, which are all manned, are split into two different types. Seven of them are equipped with size 7 energy weapons, with three turrets mounted on the underside of the javelin, and four turrets on the bow, offering forward-facing firepower. The remaining six are split into two banks of three turrets, equipped along each side of the javelin. These turrets are equipped with two size 7 ballistic cannons, but also two size 4 gatling guns, designed to deal with fighters and incoming missiles. Additionally, the javelin is equipped with what are supposedly some of the largest torpedo launchers in the game, designed for dealing damage to capital ships. Potentially, those are size 12 anti-capital torpedoes, which would be bigger than anything that currently exists in the game. Defensively, the Javelin looks like it could be well kitted out there too. This is a little more speculative, but it looks to have four capital and four large shield generators. And you might reasonably expect the Javelin to have a fairly decent armour scheme too. And as discussed, the six side turrets could also double up as anti-fighter, anti-munition point defence systems. Interestingly, and perhaps excitingly, Lieutenant Commander Alderman on the Warhammer tour talked about how all of that together means that the Javelin-class destroyer can be tasked to operate independently without support, a standalone ship. All this firepower is coupled with a heavy payload of ordnance to make the Warhammer a real problem for all sizes of ship. Hence why we can be tasked to operate independently on patrols without support from the rest of the battle group. Clearly, that's referring to a fully kitted out and fully crewed javelin, and against the sort of patrol threats that the ship is likely to come across, but hopefully makes for an interesting comparison to other capital ships which may be more reliant on support craft. And talking of support craft, the javelin does have a hangar bay. The precise size is still a little unknown, although the original design documents talked about the bay being specifically designed to accommodate the Redeemer. Some of the background during the Warhammer tour talked about how the Javelin often carried a contingent of marines, who would be deployed via the hangar bay to deal with threats on the ground or on other ships. Outside of that, some of the areas of interest aboard include the bridge, which is located up above the body of the ship. There are some hints to this that can be seen by visiting the crushed javelin on Daymar, notably that there are a few distinct crew stations, separated onto two different floors of the bridge, and that there's potentially a central section with a star map type display, similar to that of the Carrack. Some of the potential bridge roles discussed in the Javelin description page, as well as on the deep dive on crew positions, could include a helmsman, operations, communications, radar and electronic warfare, 
although it's worth pointing out that those design documents are fairly dated at this point, so take with a pinch of salt. Additionally, presumably there will be crew positions somewhere for the anti-capital turrets, perhaps a torpedo operator and an engineer somewhere else. Put all of that together and the crew requirement for a fully player crew javelin could easily be in the region of about 20 players. Which like me, you might find pretty exciting. And if you do, you might like to hit that subscribe button, whenever we do get to play around with this thing in game, you can be sure I'd love to make some videos showcasing what it's like, which you really might want to be subscribed for. Some of the other rooms in the Javelin that we know about are the big briefing room with the awesome hollow table in the middle, and a big galley for the crew to eat in. Based on some of the literature out there, you might also reasonably expect to find a medical facility, plenty of cargo storage, as well as potentially even a brig for naughties. And there's some suggestion of a separate captain's and XO's quarters for the role players out there. But one of the most interesting discussion points might be what is described as modular rooms. The idea is that there could be some different customization options here, where players could outfit their javelin with some different options. Maybe it's extra cargo or ammunition storage, maybe it's some extra sensors for explorers. It'll be interesting to see if this feature remains from the original design documents, or whether these rooms get locked into a specified loadout for all players for the sake of simplicity. Another big discussion point is to what extent player javelin ships will come ready to fly, and to what extent they may or may not be armed. The comment from the law behind the original sail document was that these were military surplus ships, with some of their military gear removed, and accordingly it would be a big task for organisations to outfit their javelin. A goal to work towards to bring these ships back into service at a military spec. Naturally, this being Star Citizen, people have interpreted that in different ways. Some people believe it simply means that the components and weapons will arrive as civilian grade components and weapons, rather than the original military grade loadout. Others believe it means the Javelin will come without any weapons equipped, only working engines and shields etc, meaning players will have to arm them themselves. And others believe that the player Javelin destroyers will just be a floating hulk, needing a complete refit by players before they're able to be used. Personally, I'd be comfortable with any of these options. That said, I can imagine a big backlash amongst some high profile backers if the ship is unusable without a lot of work, so I wouldn't be surprised if at the very least we end up with something with some working civilian components that let the Javelin be flown. Some of those backers might also hope to fly their Javelin solo, through use of NPC crew or server blades. I've talked about this before, and it might be controversial, not that I need any more controversy following a video I make, but my personal view is I hope that the Javelin is not soloable and needs a crew to operate. In fact, I'd go so far as to say I hope all of those manned turrets remain manned turrets, requiring a human being in there to fire, similar to a hammerhead at the moment. That would require a javelin to be operated by about 20 people in order to be at full effectiveness. The reason I hope that is it would give a good reason for the javelin to be fairly strong in game. For balancing reasons, a 20 person ship ought to be as strong as 20 single person ships, you would hope. And given that much has been said about the javelin's ability to go out into space and operate independently, that could make for some awesome missions. Imagine doing the Xenothreat combat mission, but the Javelin is crewed by players. That sounds pretty exciting to me. And with all of that armament, the Javelin should be really strong in ship versus ship combat. But that's not to say invincible. I'd expect the Javelin to be fairly slow and not very manoeuvrable, making it a little more vulnerable to large cannon fire from some of the larger, long range cannons in the game. And whilst the side turrets talk about being able to engage incoming munitions, they're only positioned on each side of the ship, and they look like they're obstructed by the rear engines, meaning the Javelin is potentially weak to torpedo fire from the rear. 
that's probably not a huge risk against ships like a single Polaris, where the Javelin could potentially rotate to be able to shoot down torpedoes. But against smaller craft, such as a sneaky Eclipse, there are potentially ways in. And naturally, if ending up in a fight against a similar number of players, for example a few different Polaris, Perseus and smaller fighters, positioning and player skill become much more important factors. All in all, I'm excited for the possibilities that the Javelin offers. As a ship that can go far from home, potentially into some dangerous situations and hold its own, as well as giving a big group of players a fantastic platform to work together. It's potentially going to need to be very expensive to run, but with the sort of missions it may be able to achieve when armed with a crew who know what they're doing, that's potentially a really interesting gameplay opportunity. Long story short, I really like the potential that the Javelin offers. If you really like this video, why not press that like button so I know you might want to see more videos like this. And given that I've shared my musings on this topic, I'd be intrigued for you to share your musings in the comments, it could make for a really interesting conversation. Otherwise, if you've made it this far, as ever, thank you for watching.